Welcome to another episode of Inbox Invaders. Today, I'm joined by two very special guests. I'm joined by Noam and Mark. They are the guys at Monocle. And I'll have them quickly introduce themselves. And then we're going to be talking about the platform and the problems they're solving and how you can use the tool to replace your current static accounts with AI-powered incentives. So I'm looking forward to digging in. Thanks for joining me, gents. Uh, thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah, so I'm Mark, uh, co-founder and CEO of Monocle based in New York. I'm Noam, uh, co-founder and CEO of Monocle, mostly based in Tel Aviv, uh, sometimes in uh, New York as well. Cool. Let's start uh, love that. Okay, I think let's start. Yeah, problems you guys are solving for, for e-commerce brands. Yeah, yeah, let's start. We'll, we'll just give you maybe a quick uh, high level overview. So, uh, uh, the way I like to think about it is uh, we're a promotion operating system. We help brands uh, improve their promotional spend by making it much more efficient. Uh, so, a little bit of background. Um, I come from, I worked for Lyft for a long time, so a big ride sharing company in the US, and then Instacart, a big uh, e commerce company also in the US. And uh, what I did there uh, at Lyft, at least, was uh, we basically built uh, a very sophisticated uh, team that was in charge of figuring out how to allocate a promotional budget to all of our user base. And initially, we did what every e-commerce company does, which is let's give everyone who hasn't taken a ride in the last few weeks a coupon, uh, kind of same thing they do in a cart abandonment flow. Uh, and that worked really well. You know, people still come back when you give them coupons. But uh, what was surprising to us, at least, is uh, we saw, you know, the moment we add some sophistication around that and machine learning that really uh, looks at the user behavior and starts targeting people based on that, we see massive uh, returns, basically. Uh, so we basically doubled our ROI when we started looking at how people are behaving once we give them a discount. And that's when we realized uh, this is a super powerful tool. And it's unfortunate that it's only, it's super complex to actually build something like that. Uh, and, you know, we need, uh, we, we can build a team around that that can basically offer that as a service to e-commerce companies. And so that's what we set up to do uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, so at a high level, the idea is just trying to understand what is the cause and effect of giving people promotion. And then from that, trying to understand the incrementality uh, of each individual offer uh, based on what the user has done on the site. And then uh, giving them the best possible offer. So sometimes that's no discount. Uh, you know, if the ROI is actually negative on that discount. And sometimes that, you know, some users need a little bit more of a nudge to get them to complete the purchase. So we do that too. And then we also do that all based on uh, the cost of the item. So we take a look into gross profit as well and uh, optimize things based on that. So that's kind of at a high level. Uh, we started the company, as I said, a year and a half ago, we raised a large uh, seed round uh, then. And uh, since uh, we wanna say a year ago, we started working with uh, clients and now uh, working with Dua Dry as one of the uh, the clients there too. Anything to add, Mark? Yeah, we, so to your question, like, you know, if you look at the world today outside of the within consumer, kind of outside of the big tech platforms, there's a lot of to your point disjointed tools that help you run discounts today, but do it in a way that's, you know, very, um, very complicated from operational perspective because you have to tie between, you know, Excel spreadsheets, uh, different tools you have maybe on the site, different email implementations that you do with your agency, kind of your marketing agency or in-house. So you kind of have to string all of those different tools. And then on the back end of it, you know, from a customer perspective, or consumer perspective, a lot of the times folks see very different discounts throughout their consumer journey because they're coming from different teams and because they're coming from, you know, different systems. And so you have this, you know, situation where even before we lay over the AI, you know, we have this sub-optimal experience both for kind of the operational and marketing teams of brands and then also for the consumers, which creates a lot of distrust kind of in a lot of work. And so, you know, outside of, you know, the benefits that not mentioned in 
you know, just creating more value for brands on their promotional spend and the ROI on that. We find that brands kind of love using our platform also for, you know, just streamlining operations and helping them kind of unify a customer experience and a customer journey into something that's a lot more consistent and, and kind of trust building instead of trust eroding. I hope that the problems people are facing and and while you were chatting i was actually looking at one of your landing pages here i'll quickly share my screen just to show exactly what but and i think they know their website quite well because whatever they've said right now is reflected on the website um i like this notion of scaling incentive decision making across millions of customer interactions so we've worked exactly like you've said so we work with small medium large brands and the moment you get all these different touch points interactions it becomes hell trying to a like you say plan out the incentives what should it be doing calculations to a t um you know different stages of the life cycle it becomes a nightmare and i love the questions you're also posing here is can i reduce my discount spend without losing customers we get this constantly and we do a b tests where we reduce the discount amount but then the place order rate reduces because people now aren't interested because you've kind of stripped out your, your discount code completely. So now you've got this the waiting factor where on the one end, you're saving money margins. On the other end, you're losing volumes. Um, who should receive a, a, an incentive when, how, what? Um, this is brilliant. But how does this work in the background? Do you guys feed it with like millions of touch points? Do you need historical data? How do you get started with this? Like, like, how can I get this machine to think for me? Yeah, so, yeah, I'll answer that. Uh, just before that, I do, I do agree with a lot of what you said. And one, one point I'll, I'll add, too, is that uh, we do see a lot of ads. A lot of brands uh, actually do A-B tests, which, which is great to actually understand, okay, this is the best performing discount, and I'm just going to give that to everyone. The problem with that is it's kind of like, you know, doing an A-B test for an ad that you're doing on Facebook. Sure, like you find out if the ad is, is a good thing or a bad thing, but that's just the beginning. You need to constantly keep optimizing it and you can't just say, okay, this works and I'm just gonna forget about it. You need to make sure it's always optimized and it's always changing. Like the best possible coupon isn't the same throughout the entire year. It's obviously changing. And then on top of that, it's hiding uh, kind of the heterogeneous effect of people. So some people would affect uh, respond positively to a uh, coupon, some people will just uh, maybe not actually change their conversion and therefore per uh, on AOV essentially. Uh, so that's why doing using a, a tool like ours is actually beneficial because it's it uncovers all of those uh, things. Uh, but to your question on how this actually works, so uh, so what the, the machine learning we use behind the scenes, it's called uh, causal inference. And uh, that is actually very different than uh, what exists today in the market around uh, machine learning or data science in general in the e-commerce enablement space. So a lot of uh, the tools out there you see today are around personalization. And what they typically do is they look at historical data and build correlations between uh, what they've done, what users have done in the past. That works really well for certain areas of the business. Uh, a typical example of that is, uh, you know, uh, recommending uh, uh, products that go well together. For example, if a lot of people purchase uh, a battery and a torch together, they're like it's likely a good item to offer them to buy together. Uh, that's great. With with promotions, it's a little bit different because you actually don't want to look at correlation. You want to actually look at causation. So uh, the problem here is to make sure that if you're giving someone a coupon and they used it, uh, that doesn't mean it was a good coupon. You want to give someone a coupon uh, that made them actually purchase, whereas without the coupon, they would not have purchased. And so to do that, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So uh, what we do is once we integrate into a company, uh, we have a short learning period where uh, we call it an explore phase. Uh, where we're observing how people are reacting to different incentives, essentially. That uh, gives us an initial uh, model where we can build on top of that and, and kind of build an initial model that tells us how, how are people reacting in general uh, to these discounts. 
and, you know, we might find, okay, like users that spend over nine minutes on the website, they typically need a $5 off uh, discount and uh, that is the best discount for those people. And then we, we have uh, m millions of signals that we're processing basically. And then for each individual user, we end up coming up with uh, a different prediction on what is the incremental value we will get from giving them a discount. And then we do it based on that. And then after that week, uh, we can move to uh, an optimized model and then throughout uh, that period, we were constantly learning uh, at the same time. So we're always, uh, there's always a little bit of explore, we call it. So even if we think, uh, you know, anyone who's called Mark should get 10% off, sometimes Mark will get 20% off or we're not get a discount just to see, hey, are we still accurate? Or maybe there's a seasonal, seasonal shift, something like that, where it might actually mean that we should not give Mark. Uh, a discount anymore. Well, it, the one thing that I also love is so you talking about the science behind it. Well, science, I think everybody calls it a science. Um, I have looked at some of your screenshots as well, and feel free to share your screen to show us around a bit. Is you guys do you have a dashboard where you reveal some of these these findings or observations in the data set? Um, it looks like the the discount percentage should be 16%. Um, I find with a lot of predictive analytics, AI tools, it's a bit of a Pandora's box, black box. You, ju you just don't get exposure to any of these things, um, which I think is critical in, the, in, in today's world is can you, do you allow the email and SMS market to actually communicate to whoever what these numbers are, what the machine is telling us? Um, so I don't know examples that you can show um just to show us how it gets spit out on, on on the other side yeah let me uh try and log in from my laptop and see if that will work perfect because i do see you guys also integrate with attentive and clavio and sail through and shopify yeah. it's quite extensive so i can see the complexity around it yeah, Wayne, so a couple of things, just both on the setup before and just on the black box point. On the setup before, you know, everything that Nob got described, um, we can make happen within a couple of days. So the integrations are really simple and our team's taking care of onboarding. Onboarding on average takes between two or three days at this point. And then secondly, to your point of a black box, you know, the way we're seeing it, we kind of want to be the, to make marketeers kind of superheroes. And what we want to try to do is have them you know, have good reasoning behind discounts, which is something that's really hard to do today. Um, and I think that a lot of folks, you know, feel like they're guessing a little bit um, when they're coming, you know, with a new promotion. And we just want to take that guesswork away. We don't want to replace that with this mysterious model that, you know, we're just going to run in the background and nobody knows what's happening. And instead, what we want to have people is both have the confidence that they're making the right decision, but then also be able to explain that decision and potentially also use the same reasoning and the same kind of features that we're using in our models to run, you know, ads, um, have other extensions that they're kind of targeting folks with um, that would just like extend their capability beyond incentives. So. Cool. Let me, quickly show you some uh, screenshots. Uh, so, so this is, uh, so, you know, part of what we do is uh, we want to just provide some analytics on promotions. So how are promotions being spent in general? Uh, so that's part of the app. The other uh, part is around the optimization. So in this case, this is uh, maybe a flow that we're optimizing. Uh, you can see here, this is the distribution that we found to be the most optimal one. So some people are getting no discount. Some people are getting 25% uh, off and the rest are something in between. And then you can see here how's AOV, uh, how many shoppers, revenue, all that. Uh, we always like to do experiments to make sure we're actually providing value to the brand. So in this case, uh, we're seeing an 83% uplift, which amounts to about 240K annually. Uh, and then you can see where the uplift is coming from. Uh, is it coming from conversion or from AOV? In this case, it's uh, both. And then you can see, you know, how many orders per user, things like that. Uh, 
what you i'll just touch on that quickly this is where you can see what you um, mentioned asked about before where you can actually see what are the top reasons for giving people discounts uh, so in this case it's a uh, number of items in the cart has a huge uh, implication for how sensitive you are to discounts so if you have between one and two zero and one you're not very sensitive above two is when you become pretty sensitive uh, number of email interactions is a big one as well. Hard subtotal where you actually signed up, things like that, essentially. Cool. And then uh, just one more thing I'll show you here. Uh, this is what we call the promotional strategy. So this is where we let marketers decide, A, what is the discounts that, what are the discounts that they want to give? And then B, how aggressive or conservative do they want to be with discounts? So, uh, in this case, uh, you know, maybe they pick uh, sustainable growth. Uh, so the expected uplift is about 46%. Uh, and this is the distribution of discounts that you will get with, uh, with this strategy. Uh, and then maybe the next month you want to be a little bit more aggressive. You want to hit your revenue goals. Uh, so you, you can pick promotional growth. That means 73% of users will get an aggressive coupon, so the 25% off, and that will generate 57% or approximately 57% in revenue uplift. And then on the other extreme, you know, you can always pick something that means, you know, most people aren't going to get a discount. So in this case, 50% of users aren't going to get a discount. And then the ones that would will get uh, a pretty low uh, discount. And then that will still generate about 33% of revenue uplift. So the idea is that the marketers can come in uh, and pick the strategy that works for them. And then with a the click of a button, they can change that. And then they can also change uh, what is the actual discount that they want to give. So if they want to remove uh, one of the discounts, it's just a click of a button, uh, nothing, uh, nothing to change in the emails because the emails are already uh, dynamic, essentially. Cool interesting question on that one so if if i get this right so you still need some input from the user like like exactly like you said we're willing to go up to 25 percent in discount value so i need to set that in the system and in the strategy do you flip-flop can you choose that every when how does that work yeah so uh you know when you after you set it up you 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 can if you want to just set it and forget it just pick uh sustainable growth select these promos and leave it uh be if you want uh but you know a lot of our brand uh, brands want to occasionally test a new discount for example so they so want to sure. see okay yeah they want to see maybe free free shipping over 30 dollars. maybe that's the right uh thing to test instead of giving 20 percent off so they might try adding the new discount and seeing in a few weeks how that's performing. Is the model giving it more often than uh, it used to? Uh, then, you know, sometimes some brands typically do for, for example, for Labor Day, uh, they did, uh, they maybe do a, 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 sorry, Memorial Day, they do maybe a discount on the site. And then in that case, they want to maybe match it in email or maybe want to remove it, the, the discount in the email so they can easily do that basically by going in here and changing things. And one uh, I think we had like the, so the point of the promotional strategies options is to keep control with the brand. Um, you know, the way we're trying to think of ourselves is something that enables brands, you know, scale incentive decision and do it in a way that's more based on kind of science than uh, guesswork. And so, you know, we don't want to take control over the strategy of the brand. We don't want to take control over, you know, the goals we're trying to optimize. Instead, we want to enable them as they pursue them with incentives that are, you know, aligned to those. And so we see that brands, you know, shift strategy between different seasons or to you Noam's know, point around different events. And our point is not to be prescriptive and say, oh, this is what you should do. Instead, you know, we're giving them the full menu of what they could do with incentives. And then, you know, it's on, it's within their control to decide what do they want to pursue. Um, and so that is something that is always going to be left with kind of the brand as the ultimate decision maker, uh, kind of the overall strategy and, you know, kind of inputs that they're able to, convey to the model and to us and make decisions based on that. Got it. Got it. Love this. 
Tell me also, so let's maybe go for the sustainable model uh, because we want to test it out. How do you then push that back into the email output? So if there's a flow email, campaign email, a paid ad, how do you then push that out? So Clavio communicates with your model. How, how do we go about doing that? Yeah, sure. So I can show you how that works on our side. Uh, let me share my screen again. So uh, typically the way we do this is by uh, doing a webhook in the flow uh, that basically informs us a user has entered uh, this flow. So let me go through an example here. Uh, oops. Yeah. So if we click on this uh, so this is our webhook uh, that tells us someone has entered this flow and in the background what we do is we look up this user and see what is the discount if any that this user should receive uh, so this webhook uh, just has information a little bit about uh, you know, type of user what's the name of the flow things like that once they go through it so we can uh, preview it here uh, I can click send webhook, uh, and then we can go to uh, the user's profile. And then uh, in the background, we basically generated this coupon code. And then uh, now what we can do is we can use that tag we assigned on the user in the email itself, basically. So if before, you know, maybe you said uh, welcome 10 is the coupon code. Now what we can do is something like this. Uh, so we can write uh, use code person dot monocle coupon code uh, for the discount description, and then that would show up. So uh, we can preview it, and then this is the guy we sent the webhook for, and then you can see this is the coupon that we just generated for them. And then likewise, we can just hide uh, the section if the user did not receive a discount. Uh, so I think this. One, receive the discount. Uh, let's see if we can find one that did not. There we go. So that person didn't get a discount, so oh. it just disappears. Very interesting. I think what I like about this most is I know we've briefly mentioned A B sting, setting up all these complicated split paths so you can test the 5% versus a 10% aggressive versus not aggressive. Re Pushing it uh, this over to Monocle, let Monocle do this for you, and you look at the Monocle data um, to find those statistical answers, um, the uplifts. I think that's that's just brilliant. Um, you also had something before we move on um, or, or wrap up. Um, you had a, in a dashboard a gross profit a label as well or option. Do you first need to enter your your um, unit economics, your cogs and so forth into the system? Um, or do you guys not dabble in the space of help me figure out my margins here? What, what, what does that look like? Does it still need to come from the business head, correct? Yeah, so, uh, so the way we can do this, uh, we can build a machine learning model that is optimized on revenue uh, or we can optimize it based on gross profit. So it's completely up to the brand to decide what is the metric they want to optimize on. If they want to optimize on gross profit, uh, we just need uh, COGS information or any information that they, uh, any formula that they use to calculate uh, the gross profit. So if it's already inputted into Shopify, we can grab that automatically, basically. Uh, and then we can start uh, basically producing predictions for how it will affect uh, gross margins, essentially. Uh, so yeah, we can cool. we can do that. Is it based off of percentages, a gross profit margin of sixty percent, and you guys work out the ideal ideal discount distribution yeah. to hit those margins? So you do the smart calculation around if we want to hit sixty five percent, this is what it looks like. Yeah, That's pretty exactly. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. That's smart. So it'll never go over. It'll obviously go under or no discounts to margins. I think that's smart because I think a lot of people are just thumb sucking the numbers. I think one of you guys mentioned that is I think it's 25%. Cool. Let's just go for that. Where if you can set it to be dynamic in that way and you guys do take care of those calculations, 
I think that's the brain that we need to, to use AI for because we are not all uh, economists and you know, data scientists. So I do love, love that capability, freaking smart. Yeah, I agree. Very cool. And tell me the, you said that, um, so when you um, connect a webhook and it, it, it has a lookup of a particular person, is that just looking at your Shopify data plugged into your platform? Yeah, so we have a Shopify app that basically uh, understands what the user has done on the site. Uh, so we grab data from there. If there's there third-party tools that uh, the company uses to collect data, uh, we can plug into those and then to just supplement uh, the data. But yes, typically it's uh, all coming from Shopify directly. Got it. Got it. Super cool. Okay, before I let you guys go, um, what are you guys seeing for some of the people that have used the platform in terms of uh, revenue uplift, profits, and so on? Yeah. So we, as I mentioned, we're working with brands already, at scale brands, mostly in North America. Um, we started from uh, email and SMS and expanding onto on-site promotions and offers. And now we essentially, the way to look at us is we're kind of a unified engine across both. Um, in terms of results, what we're seeing, um, and there's a number of case studies on our site, we're seeing a pretty consistent lift of between 30 to 35% on the gross margin. Um, that is that is comparing us to a previous discount um, policy. So let's take an example. We have brands that you know had this fast and hard rules around if you are in checkout abandonment, then you will get 15%. Well, if you're in cart abandonment, you will get 10%. So what we do usually is after we develop the model, we compare ourselves to those um, to those discount policies. We do a split A/B test, and we find that a lot of the times, you know, there's a lot of people that are just getting into the wrong flow, if you will, in terms of the discount they're getting, um, and that dictates a lot of the outcomes. And so we really are able to kind of improve results on that. Um, brands that ask us to open longer time periods we're also able to kind of drive results with a longer LTV so if you're, you know if you're a subscription brand we also are able um, to kind of drive increase in LTV over a longer time period that obviously takes us a little bit longer to also measure those effects um, I'd say that kind of the biggest brand so far that we've done case studies with you know honey love death wish coffee TPJ are all kind of national US brands um, and are all within that 30 to 35 percent bucket and gross gross profit from from the flows that we optimized. Got it. Nice. I love that. Last question for me, then we can wrap up. Um, you do say you play well with subscription services platforms, recharge, Skio, all those platforms and loyalty programs. Do you guys play well with any loyalty programs, giving incentives, or how does how does that work? Yeah, so, I mean, we haven't integrated into loyalty program yet, but we are talking to folks in that area, and that is something that is a natural extension. So that's the still on the roadmap. Okay, smart. Especially if you guys can also take over that loyalty side of things, because I feel like loyalty is also such a static thing in itself. Right. Um, if someone hits a certain tier, give them 30% off. Like, like why exactly? Um, okay, love this. We can wrap up. Um, how can someone get in touch with you guys? A demo, free trial that looked like as a next step. Yeah, um, so our site has a book demo um, section that I think that's the easiest way to get in touch. Um, otherwise, you know, send us an email, uh, mark and nom at usemonocle.com. Uh, and yeah, excited to chat to people. Love it. Good session, guys. I love this power of AI. It's not going to take over the human race and our jobs. We need to embrace this, people. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks once again for joining me. And it was a great session. I think um, there's a lot we can, we can, and yeah, I'll check you guys soon. Thanks, man. Thanks.